he was afraid and he began to sink and he cried out Lord save me so Jesus immediately reached out his hand took hold of him saying oh you of little faith why did you doubt and when they got into the boat the wind ceased and those in the boat worshiped him saying truly you are the Son of God so um, as I was walking through all of this the Lord didn't give me this all this understanding of this passage all at once it was really cool because it was just like one piece at a time through the very beginning from the time I was in the hospital until this last week God was just giving me a piece of the story and like how it's a picture of my journey every single time and um, one of the first things I think that we really grasped from it was okay so we're all in the boat and Jesus is getting out of the water and he's walking to Jesus and like what Natalie was saying, the Lord revealed that he wasn't walking to Jesus for the miracle. Like Peter didn't know that he was going to perform this miracle. He wasn't thinking like, oh, I'm going to get out of this boat and I'm going to perform a miracle. Everybody watch. Like, hey, other Christians, hey, other followers, watch me perform a miracle. Like, no, he heard, he knew God's voice. So he got out of the boat and he walked towards Jesus for Jesus. He wasn't going to Jesus in prayer or in adoration for healing and just for and like so God was reminding me of that like we don't you don't come to the Lord for healing you come to the Lord for for him because he's like the only thing that's going to satisfy you completely um, and if he heals you that's you know extra that's grace and that's a gift but you're not going to Jesus for anything else but for all of him and then you you ask for the healing um, and then Peter was walking um, and so God just gave me this this picture one night when I was laying in bed and I was just terrified and I kept feeling like the Lord was saying I'm carrying you I'm carrying you and so I just kept like praying about that the next day and I was like yes Lord you are carrying me and I was like praying about it. I was like you are carrying me because in the middle of the night is when I'd like wake up the most I still will and I'll just like my mind will just like repeat um, something whether it's Lord heal me heal me heal me or Lord be my healer be my shield Lord just be with my kids something like repetitive um, and so that night I remember him just saying he'll carry me like it wasn't me talking to him it was almost like my voice was talking back to me and I just heard him say I'll carry you so the next morning I, I asked the Lord I was like what is like you carrying me actually mean like how does that play out and when I thought on this and read this again like God just gave me this picture of my journey of cancer and how like I'm on the boat with my friends and family that are on this journey with me and I get out of the boat and I walk to Jesus and I look at the storm I look at my circumstances I look at oh it's cancer so I drown it's in your liver now so I drown look to Jesus you know um, it's likely to come back so I start drowning and I look back to Jesus it's in my brain I have brain cancer I'm looking at the storm and then I look to Jesus so it's like this repetitive thing that I kept doing but this vision this like beautiful picture he gave me was like me getting out of the boat walking to the Lord and just saying Jesus like here I am crying after I had drowned several times trying to get to him because I kept getting nervous and anxious and scared and looking at my circumstances and he kept pulling me back up and when he got to me like the picture he gave me was like what you would see as a groom picks up his bride and like sweeps her and like carries her and Jesus carries me back to the boat and he puts me on the boat and I'm with the friends and family on my journey and the boat goes back to dry land and when we get on dry land the Lord revealed that the miracle that everyone saw on the boat was not just for Peter it was for everybody it's for everyone who watched and saw like my cancer journey and so the whole time I just thought this was for all like non-believers like nobody who believes that there that Jesus is God that there is a God and but God was like no this is to increase this is for them but also to increase the faith of believers to encourage their faith because I kept being like Lord I don't want this to be about me like 
Um, you're giving me grace. You're giving me strength to walk. You, I, I had, I'm on chemo and I, and I'm walking and I have my hair and I'm like, Lord, I don't want this to be about me. Like, let it all be about you. And I just kept like doing this thing where I was like weirded out because I was so scared that I was making it too much about me because of all the likes and comments on Facebook. And I was like, I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be all about you, Jesus, you, Jesus, you, Jesus. And he like so gracious and was like, it's not about you. It's about me. They all see me like people on the boat, just as Peter, as the scripture said, when Peter got back in the boat, it was the 12 disciples who already knew that he was the son of God, already followed him, already saw him feed the 5,000. But when they got back in the boat, all of the believers, followers of Jesus in the boat, cried out and said, with amazement, they worship and said, truly you are the son of God. So it was like their faith was awakened. It was like their faith was encouraged and like, all the people that are on this journey and your faith is awakened, your faith is encouraged. Like God is saying, now all of you guys are going to go share this, like share the gospel, share this good news that you just saw, this miracle that you just saw in Raina. And because like when you hear this story, you don't think about Peter because that's what I was getting like confused about. But you don't think about Peter in the story, right? Like you, when you hear the story, you, you're the main picture, the main star of the show is Jesus walking on water. It wasn't like, oh, you know that story about Peter walking on water? No, it's like, you know that story about Jesus walking on water and the miracle he performed? And so that like, was like my biggest prayer now. And, and then it was like, Lord, just whatever miracle you perform, even if you don't perform, the miracle of someone's dead soul coming back to life. They were dead in their trespasses and sin. They're not now alive in Christ. That would be the miracle in itself. And um, what he also like showed me in this picture, in this verse, was that it wasn't a, necessarily a full storm that, they, that was scaring them. It was the wind and the waves that terrified them. And it was like another reminder that, um, and like when we were studying in Habakkuk, sometimes it's just like the beginning of suffering that scares us. It's not the actual, we're not even actually in the storm. So maybe like we get a bump or a lump on our body and we're immediately terrified or something happens to one of our kids and our heart sinks and we're getting afraid. Like our kids may have not just been diagnosed with leukemia. So maybe it's not the actual storm, but they have like a lump on them or a test result that comes back funky and we immediately, we sink. And God was showing like how that's the same scenario as me. Like I didn't have brain cancer, but I had the lump on my head. So I immediately thought I have brain cancer. It was just like, God is so gracious that even the thought, the little doubts that we do have the beginning of something, like we almost get creamed by a truck. And we just think, we, our minds just automatically go, well, I could have died and I could have killed the kids and I could have kept, killed all of this and then what would have happened and who would have watched my kids and we go down all of these paths and then we like end up in we end up drowning but the only thing that Peter had to say which is what Natalie was like saying too the only thing that I could say the only thing Peter said was Lord help me and um, that was that was so similar to my situation when he Came and told me that I had cancer because I was trying to think of all the verses that I've ever read or ever memorized and I kid you not like no base verses could come to my mind I could not think of any verses like I was like okay Lord now is ever a good time to bring back those verses <laughs> it would be now and the only thing I could cry out is the Lord is my helper the Lord is my helper and that was enough for the Lord's present to be so thick and so tangible I didn't have to know all those verses. I didn't have to have all of Romans 8 memorized. I didn't have to know the book of um, Obadiah that no one even knows is in the Bible, on the Bible, you know? Like, it was just God saying, what is, it's more about your reaction. Like, are you trusting in me? And the Bible talks about horses. Are you trusting in horses and chariots? Are you trusting in the Lord? And um, it was just really cool to see how Peter all when he was drowning in his circumstances 
It didn't take an amazing, awesome, long prayer. It didn't take him going to church 400 times. And God didn't rebuke him and call him to repentance. Like, all at once, when he called out, it was just Peter saying, he, Peter looked at the storm, he drowned, and then he said, Lord, save me. That's all he said. And Jesus immediately picked him up and then spoke truth. Then was like, oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? He wasn't like, because I said this in one of my chemo videos. He wasn't like, I'm going to pull you out of your drowning. If you repent three times, you say your <laughs> prayers, you quit cussing, quit having sex before marriage, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep you from drowning. You know, but that's what culture Christianity teaches. It's so against, it's not even 100% biblical that like we try to engage people and get people to come to, to Jesus and come to the gospel and tell them to stop doing all these things because we don't clean ourselves up and then come to Jesus. We come to Jesus. He pulls us up out of our sin and then we don't want to do those things that we love so much. Like, that's the gospel. It's not work. It's not workspace. We don't work ourselves to the gospel. And that was what Peter is showing. God is showing me that Peter did. And that's for all of us. Is in our anxiety, whatever we're dealing with, whatever anxious thoughts we have that keeps up in the night, it's, Lord, save me. And Lord, save me. And he immediately pulled Peter out and he told Peter exactly what um, I cried out and what I could so relate to is oh you have little faith why did you doubt and then just that picture of him like carrying me so I kept feeling like I would pray and I'd ask the Lord like hey where am I at in this journey now like am I in the boat am I walking my water am I drowning are you carrying me back to the boat so for a long time I felt like God was saying I'm carrying you back to the boat and I'm like Okay, God, it's too soon. Like, don't I need to suffer more? Like, shouldn't I, like, go through a lot more pain? Shouldn't chemo hurt a lot more? Like, because I felt like God was literally telling me, I'm carrying you back to the boat. And I'm like, so I don't have to do anything. Like, he's carrying me. Like, he fights the battle for us, for all of us, for all the suffering. He takes the plow. And I just couldn't understand that. I'm like, but no, 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 no. You don't understand. Like, like I need it to hurt more. For you to be carrying me back like shouldn't this hurt more it's like when you pray for option god should i do option a or option b you probably want me to do option b because it's the hardest you know you want me to go the hard route right god and it's like we try to play god we try to act like we know more than god does and i just like really struggled with all of that like that scenario and so god was like no i'm carrying you back you just be still and let the lord fight for you be strong in the lord i am your shield and so I really think it's just 100% God's grace. Because I, y'all, I kid you not, I look back on the past, like, four months, four and a half months, and I'm like, how in the heck? How in the heck am I being so calm? How do I have, how do I have so much joy? Like, I, the Raina that I know, <laughs> wouldn't have that much joy. I mean, I freak out over everything. Like, Titus fell just off a little cliff, or a little... A chair. <laughs> a chair that you saw you acted like it was a cliff. Yeah, I felt like it was a cliff. I was like, my baby, my baby, my baby. And Dustin was like, oh my gosh, girl, girl, go home. Go home. I was like freaking out, like totally. But I do that over everything. I'm such a dramatic person. That's how I know, like, all of this is from the Lord. <laughs> because I'm just so calm, you know? And so, like, joyful and but I'm like how is that in in it the only explanation is God's grace but all of your prayers like every single about it the saints praying for me and carrying me through every single step and every single person who takes care of one of my children or cooks me a meal or brings me coffee or groceries and it's just like there's no way I could fight this battle if I was alone like if I isolated myself like literally isolated myself and dealt with this one-on-one, -on -one, there's no way I could win the battle. I mean, the Lord, victory in the Lord, obviously, but there's no way I could be as physically, I know it is God's grace. I do, if this happened to me again on round two, I would not expect this to happen again, like the joy that I have. But I also don't want to be shocked that God is answering your prayers. So sometimes I'm like, okay, God, you're shielding me. We're asking you to be my shield, and you are, because here you are shielding me, and the flaming darts are coming, and they're not hurting me. The, the effects of chemo and cancer are not hurting me. There are moments that I'm deep in the pit, and I'll call out to the Lord, and he'll rescue me again and again. But it's just like, 
God is answering every single one of y'all's prayers. And like sometimes when y'all ask me how I am, like if I'm having a bad day, I would love to just tell you I'm having a bad day. But for the most part, the Lord has just been really gracious. And like it's just been His joy. Like it says in the Bible, like in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. And I feel like that is like what's happening right now. And like we can all experience that right now. And whatever good or bad circumstances are, but some days I'm like, man, I told Pastor Bill one day, I was like, I feel like I just need to fake that I'm having like a really bad time (laughs) because I feel like people don't believe me. And I feel like they want me to be like, this sucks. I don't even know about like God anymore. And he was like, I know what you mean. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It's like some, it's like some people aren't satisfied in the fact that their prayers are being answered. Like, I don't feel like we should, I'm shocked that he's answering prayers, but I don't feel like God wants us to be shocked. I feel like God wants us to be in full faith and first full assurance that whatever we ask in his name, as long as it's according to his will, that he hears us and that he will grant us what we ask for because we are his children. We are not some... We're, I mean, we're, like we were saying, we're more important than the birds. And he's already numbered. He captures every tear of us in a bottle. The scripture says every tear we cry, he captures in the palm of his hands. And like, like you would in a bottle, he captures every single one. Like he is such an intimate and specific father, but yet we create this God that we think he is. Oh God, I don't want to come to you. I don't want to bother you, God. Like he's an earthly father. He's not an earthly father. He's so, 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 so different than that. But yet I find myself being like, okay, Lord, I don't want to bother you right now. I've got one more prayer request. Okay, one more big, big favor. Okay, but if you don't want it to, you don't have to. You know, but it's like, no. He says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's not a, I might give you rest if you ask in the right way, if you ask at the seventh hour, you know, at 2.5 seconds. And, you know, like, no. Come to me, all who are weary. And I will give you rest with a promise. And so Peter in this story has just like rocked my world. And there's probably 400 things I'm forgetting in this story that God has taught me. Yeah, you go. He, I mean, we're he, gonna write a book. She's gonna be famous one day. <laughs> <laughs> no, only uh, Jesus will be famous for yes. this. All Him, His spotlight. Um, but man, it's it's just been crazy because, like I said. It wasn't until later on that I realized the people in the boat were every every single believer. And I was just kept praying and asking, okay, Lord, so I'll be on dry land after chemo, right? I'll be on dry land. I can share the gospel right after you heal me. So I thought I'd, I'd go share the good news after my suffering is over. And I feel like that's always been my mentality. Like when I'm struggling in my marriage, I'm struggling with having kids, I'm struggling with whatever it is, I will do good. I will share your name after you heal me or after you save my marriage or after I clean myself up a little bit and get back to church and do all the right things, then I'll go share who you are. And God, like, didn't, I didn't even think that I would already be on dry land. And so when we were praying about him carrying me and putting me back in the boat and the boat going back to dry land, I thought it would be forever from now. And he could still mean that, but... Anyway, so, did I miss anything before they flip it over? Um, I mean that we were on a boat. <laughs> yeah. So then, last week, Natalie and I went on the lake. And my mom and my stepdad and Jimmy and Dustin, we were on a boat in a lake. And, and every, we were praying and, and I, it was, I didn't take any, I didn't pay any attention. I'm just taking pictures. And um, I get back, and I look. We're praying on the boat. Yes, we're praying on the boat, and not thinking anything about being on a boat. Never did we never think we were on a boat. Never clicked about the whole boat thing, you know. And then she's praying, and then all of a sudden we get a wave from nowhere. Like wave, wave. No boats around. No boats around us. So we all stop praying, look around. And I just start hitting her butt. I mean, it just clicks. You're on a boat. You're on a boat. I'm like, we're she on did. a boat. She did. She was smacking my butt. I'm like, look what is happening. And she's like, and then she's praying. And it's like, she's like, 
telling you that we're on dry land and I'm just praying and, out loud not thinking about what's going on and it's just like all of a sudden it just like clicked because I mean I just thought of it as a parable I don't think like we're physically on a boat right you know and then you know what we we look look so every picture get on I dry get back, land every I picture see. I get back there's light Every picture of Raina on a boat. There was a light. It was like chill boats. And we were like, oh my gosh. And it all clicked at the same time. And we had no idea it was happening. And then we had like a video. We have it on video too. Yeah, I have a video. And there's actually three lights. And I showed it to somebody. And they said that's uh, Father, Son. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, Holy that Spirit. really cool. So it was kind of like huge sign yeah. you know I mean I'm just like oh I'm like look at these pictures of you on the boat I'm like look at the other picture other pictures are fine no none of my pictures have them it's just those just, pictures and only on the boat. when you're in a boat it wasn't any other time in the water or anywhere else Isn't that crazy? just in the boat like the light that one beam that is like direct <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't see any of it until we were on yes. dry land. No, no. Wow. And yeah, two different kinds of boats: a kayak and a boat. Yeah, like two different boat days. We didn't even think about it. So we were pretty, pretty encouraged. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, if this is what you've been thinking, and this is what's happening, and we were on a boat, and this happened when you're on a boat. <laughs> She's just smacking me. Oh, it's happening. <laughs> Up. And Jimmy and Dustin are like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you guys get this? Like, this is the boat thing. We're on a boat. This is what she's been talking about. <laughs> and then you get back and look at the pictures. I was like, wow, God is good. Like, just like he gives you hugs, you know, like you said. It's just, he's just, every time you start to get a little discouraged, I mean, just something else like miraculous happens. Yeah, just divine. over and over in in ways. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I mean, tell you how many times I've had chills. I mean, my hairs just stand up. I'm like, oh, gosh. This is crazy. It's so, so good. Crazy. <laughs> but, yes, and just the peace and the peace you have. Like, it can only be for God. Yeah. Like, when she, her mom told me, and and, and I was a disaster, and she calls me and she's like, how are you? Are you okay? I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, like are you why okay? are you okay? So I'm just praying that you have that times a thousand yes. in the hospital. Like that everyone is just yeah. in awe and everybody that you meet. Yes. So. I pray that too, but God really, I mean, I'm going to take this with me to the hospital because for me, it's just like a confirmation almost that I'm not crazy. <laughs> that looks like you see around you. Yes. All around you. I don't know. But I think the scripture also talks about not asking God for signs. Like, don't test God. Like, he's not to be tested. Um. So a part of me, after we found this one, to be like, hey, Natalie, you want to go back on the boat and see what happens to you? <laughs> you know? Like, I really did think that. I was like, let's go back on a boat and just see, take a picture. <laughs> like, I wonder if I'm, like, standing in different ways, like, how the light will be. Like, I literally do. I'm planning all these ideas. And um, the Lord was like, uh, you're asking for a sign. Don't ask for that sign. But, um. Anyways, I just think it's God, like, confirming with his people that, like, he is working in all of our lives. This is not just about me. This was, the story's not about Peter. Just remember that. When you share the story, when you are encouraged by it, and me, like, please. But it is a neat. No, I'm me. just, I say, because it's easier, I think it's easier to talk to the people you don't know about Raina and then go in to what the Lord's doing in her life to share the gospel than just like, hey, are you a Christian? Yeah. You know, which she says all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, 
sometimes it's hard, but I mean, after being, I can't, I can't stop myself. Yeah. I'm just like, my best friend, you know, God is just doing amazing things. You should see everything. She has cancer and they're like really happy about that. <laughs> 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 Why are you happy that your best friend has cancer? <laughs> so, it's been quite the season. Yeah, it's definitely been a journey, but there's no way I'd be here without. No, and everything that God's single. provided, too, you know. Yeah. Just everything you could have needed. Like to for Justin for the random the people that we don't know and the five K and you could raise money so Justin could be home. Justin's off work. And then J Jimmy's not working, so I've been able to help you. <laughs> yeah. And he's you know steps up and watches all the boys. Yeah. And I can go help you or watch you your kids. Be more quarantined that way since Jimmy's not at work. But I know one other thing. I'll quickly, I'll quickly say the Lord has taught me over and over again through this journey not without a lot of hurt not without a lot of confusion is and pride being broken down is um like I never had because I never asked and a part of me like with the church last Wednesday um there's this like one scripture in James that talks about like if anyone's among you or sick call and ask the elders to pray over you and like so it talks about the person who's sick calls and gets on to pray and then he goes and he has them pray. And so I, was, I wasn't I was bitter or mad, but I, I had like in the back of my mind, I was like, that's really weird that the pastors like, because our church is just so awesome on, on top of everything. It's kind of weird they haven't just been like, hey, you know, come to church. We want to pray over you. You know, I thought that was just a little weird in the back of my mind. And then that verse popped in my mind. You, you're the sick person. You call and you ask because they have prayed. They called me and prayed. The pastor came to my house and prayed. But just like me sitting and them all praying around me. But the virus makes things like really weird. And so Pastor and Todd. Wants to move you yes. Don't get too close to you. That's what Pastor Todd said. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what it is. But that was like a strike to my pride too, though, because I was like, well, I don't want to ask because I don't want to be like. Look at me, look at me, pray for me. And like, I'm just so tired of this always being about me. And I was just at that point where I was like, I don't want this to be about me. I it just didn't. But then God was like, well, you have to ask. Like, it's biblical. It's not like you're being prideful, thinking too highly of yourself, thinking that you're thinking this about you. I don't know. It's a weird conversation right. that I have with the Lord. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, the point of it is. I bet he's used to it. <laughs> it's not that weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's just saying, you don't know me, but it's not that weird. <laughs> just another one. <laughs> but I really do feel like I've been super duper blessed because the this new Raina that's formed out of all of this, because before I had cancer, I had Titus. And I was really lowly and really weak with him. I was on modified bed rest. So God was equipping me for this because I was having to ask for more help. And it was really hard because I was a stay-at-home mom and I homeschooled. So I just did everything. I barely even asked my mother-in-law to watch the kids. Like, you didn't even watch the kids. Nobody watched my kids. I never asked. I was like, I'm going to do it myself. I don't, I don't need anybody. I can do this. And God has taught me through... You know, bed rest with Titus after Titus was born, and Dustin was working 80 hours a week and had three kids under the age of five, and cancer. That the reason why I feel like I've been so, like, so much extra, like, supernatural out of my mind more than I could even ask, think, or imagine is because I have been less prideful and let down those thoughts that I were thinking, those lies that I was pretending to put on everybody, you know, and was just like, no. You know, like, Mary Beth, she loves to craft. She loves to make things. I'm just going to ask her to make these cards. And I know she's busy. She's got three kids. She just gave birth. She's nursing. Her husband's never home. But I'm going to ask her anyway so, <laughs> to make these cards to pass on at Marquee, you know. And it, I was gonna, yeah. I'm going to ask the pastors. I'm going to ask my Sunday school class to pray. I'm going to ask you guys to pray. Like, it just hit me all at once mm -hmm. that, like, I just, that's what I need. That's what I know that we all need. I'm just going to ask. And God has really used it. Yeah. And to accept blessings. Because at first it's hard. To accept blessings, yeah. It's hard, too. Yeah, I'm like, no, I don't need, 
And then you, then you've had trouble with thankfulness. Like she's had so many blessings. How can you possibly thank everybody? Thank everyone that's done everything. Mm -hmm. Can anybody, can someone else talk? I feel like I've talked a lot. I've seen two people come and people leaving. I'm like, I've seen people pulling in and out all over. Just, I don't have a pistol or anything to watch protect us. I would watch it. We got one inside. I can use one. I don't know how. Do you know how to use a bow? Oh, I can. Yeah, we can shoot. We can shoot off. I will bring I can here. pull a bow and I can shoot. <laughs> I will hide. Right. Give me a knife. Give Mark me a made knife. me go to a knife fighting competition. <laughs> I had to go for a week to learn how to fight with a knife. That's the things I do for my husband. Just Sweet. Yeah.